Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com, DwyerSportsBetting.com. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. You know, without any information whatsoever, other than speculation and my conclusion based on what I've seen, I'm guessing that Manny Pacquiao against Floyd Mayweather is a done deal. In fact, I believe that these guys are actually trying to publicize the fight with publicity stunts. So, we get a Miami Heat game where, coincidentally, Floyd happens to have a courtside seat on one side of the court. Manny happens to have a courtside seat on the other side of the court. And, of course, the guys then meet up and exchange telephone numbers. Cameras, of course, happen to be there right? Isn't this really a publicity stunt at this point? I thought Floyd called Manny earlier to offer him 40 million dollars. What? Floyd lost Manny's phone number? Let me get this right. Manny picks up the phone. A guy's on the phone offers him 40 million dollars and Manny doesn't think to get the guy's phone number? Come on. I mean this this is a publicity stunt um, HBO, Showtime, I'm sure, are in the background loving every minute of this. It's cheap publicity. You don't even have to pay to put it in the paper, right? The reporters are there. They're eating it up. Uh, keep in mind, too, it's January 30th. If they're going to get something popping for Cinco de Mayo weekend, they're going to have to sign a contract soon because... With these big fights, it's not just doing the right training camp. It's also making the promotional appearances, right? Getting that ad campaign together. So I have a hard time believing that these guys would just happen to be at the same Miami Heat game. You know, the Heat were happening with LeBron James. Is there any Heat fan watching this video today who thinks the Heat are serious contenders for the NBA championship in 2015? Right? Keep in mind, Floyd was raised in Michigan. Manny was raised in the Philippines. Really? These guys are Heat fans? Come on. Come on. So I'm expecting a fight between these two guys. I'll be absolutely astonished if Floyd picks anyone else. Let me just say, I do believe, while these guys obviously get paid on this fight, I personally feel that history would remember Floyd fighting for the middleweight title trying to do something he hasn't done before, right? Fighting a Miguel Cotto, more so than him fighting a fighter who, let's face it, got knocked out by Juan Manuel Marquez. Now let's go further. We're all getting ready for the Super Bowl here in the United States. It's going to take place on Sunday. And we're watching shows on great stations like NFL Network, right? where guys like Sterling Sharp are breaking down film of the teams, trying to figure out their tendencies, trying to figure out what they can glean from the film. Well, isn't that the problem with Manny Pacquiao against Floyd Mayweather? Right. The problem is Mayweather is very similar to Juan Manuel Marquez. Very similar. Right? Both are technicians. Both can operate in slow motion. Both figure out ways to have you come to them. Both are master counterpunchers. Both hit harder than the public understands. Right? The problem is that Floyd has four fights worth of film on Manny Pacquiao against Juan Manuel Marquez. Right? Four. Now understand, and I know I'm in the minority, and that's all good, but I personally believe that Manny Pacquiao didn't win any of those fights, right? The first fight officially is a draw. Then you get fights two and three. I encourage you to look at the crowd at the end of the third fight. Then, of course, in the fourth fight, there's no doubt. Floyd has so much film. On Manny, looking, let's say, less than Manny, 
against Juan Manuel Marquez. And Floyd is exactly the kind of technician who can break down what Marquez is doing that worked and how he can enhance it, right? Because Floyd's faster than Juan Manuel Marquez. Floyd, let's face it, he's a better athlete than Juan Manuel Marquez, right? You saw that when the two guys fought each other, right? Floyd was getting there first with his punches. So my point is simply, given that Manny Pacquiao really didn't show that much improvement from the first fight to the fourth fight, doesn't Floyd have too much film to work with? with regard to Manny Pacquiao. Right, keep in mind Pacquiao has no films of Floyd getting knocked out. He has no films of Floyd losing. Right? The Floyd Mayweather that existed back for the first Castillo fight. Let's talk about the controversial Mayweather fights. Right? That first Castillo fight. That Mayweather no longer existed by the time of the Ricky Hatton fight, right? Hatton gets inside, doesn't come close to duplicating what Castillo did, right? Doesn't come close. If you want to talk about the Miguel Cotto fight, right, which I think is the most meaningful challenge to Floyd of late, keep in mind that Floyd won that fight by a wide margin. Floyd finished that fight strongly. I encourage you to revisit the 12th round of that fight. I would also argue that Miguel Cotto is a different fighter than Manny Pacquiao, right? Both guys are, you know, have big left hands, but Cotto's out of an orthodox stance, and Cotto's trying to get inside and smash left hooks off your body. That's not really Manny Pacquiao's game. Pacquiao's trying to throw straight lefts from distance as he darts around the ring. Right? The Marcus Maidana fights. Let's face it. Floyd solved Maidana by the second fight, didn't he? The Floyd that entered the ring for Maidana's first fight didn't exist for the second fight. If Manny Pacquiao were to enter the ring mirroring Marcus Maidana, he loses badly, doesn't he? And let's face it, he couldn't mirror Marcus Maidana. Because Marcus Maidana is a guy who throws punches at odd angles on weird curves, who comes in, who tries to muscle you with his body while he's trying to throw punches that are, let's say, on the borderline, if not a little bit south of the borderline, to your body. That's not Manny Pacquiao's game. Pacquiao's not physical in the ring like Marcus Maidana. Pacquiao doesn't come in and lean on you like Marcus Maidana. So here's the problem, right? Floyd has tape on Manny, right? Tape that shows a successful approach, at least a competitive approach, to fighting Manny Pacquiao, right? The Juan Manuel Marquez series. And Floyd can tailor his game to mirror Marquez's game, right? I would encourage you online here. There's an interview of Freddie Roach following the third fight between Marquez and Pacquiao. And Roach is exasperated. He talks about how he tried to get Manny to do certain things, and Manny kept falling back into bad habits. Well, keep in mind, there are other tapes of guys having success against Manny Pacquiao. Whoever you think won the first Timothy Bradley-Manny Pacquiao fight, that fight's competitive, isn't it? Right? You know, that's the problem here. So Pacquiao has great speed, no question about it. Pacquiao's going to start faster than Mayweather, no question about it. But Mayweather has the blueprint, doesn't he? Right? Pacquiao's had some tough fights with guys whose style Mayweather knows well. Hell, Mayweather fought Marquez, didn't he? So let's just say, as I've said before, I think 
Pacquiao Mayweather goes to Mayweather. I understand guys like Jean Pascal, right? Guys who've held belts in the world of boxing feel it's a 50-50 fight. How could it be? Given the four fights Manny had against Juan Manuel Marquez. Let me ask you this question too. If there isn't a blueprint to having success against Juan Manuel Marquez, excuse me, against Manny Pacquiao, if there isn't a blueprint, then how is it that Marquez could get knocked down three times in the first round of their first fight and then somehow find a way to go the distance in that fight? Isn't there a formula that Marquez stumbles upon in the second or third round of that very first fight, the one that ends up being a majority draw? Listen closely to Pacquiao supporters who say that first round should have been 10-6. Well, as you listen to them, understand, okay, a 10-6 round would have given Pacquiao a close points decision. In other words, Pacquiao starts several points ahead of Marquez after the first round. Then Marquez takes away his speed, doesn't he? Then Marquez, even if you believe the first round should have been 10-6, wins the majority of the other 11 rounds. So let me ask a tough question here. Right, Because you've heard me talk about how I prefer fighters who can adjust. Fighters I call adaptive reactive. Right? What's the difference between Manny Pacquiao in his first fight against Marquez and Manny Pacquiao in his last fight against Marquez? I would argue that Pacquiao's actually deteriorated somewhat. Right, as I've mentioned in earlier videos, when Manny Pacquiao gets stopped in that fourth fight, that's the second time in that fight Manny Pacquiao hits the canvas. The second. The first three times, Pacquiao never hits the canvas. Isn't Pacquiao now getting caught with some shots he didn't get caught with before? Take a look at the knockout sequence that ends the show in the fourth fight between Marquez and Manny Pacquiao. Take a look at it. Right? Isn't Marquez sitting on that right hand? Doesn't Marquez know that he's going to have an opportunity to throw that right hand? Doesn't he know it? Now let me say this. I've spoken to a lot of hardcore fans of Manny Pacquiao. Interestingly enough, they seek me out. Right? I'll, I'll be in a bar someplace and suddenly someone's sitting next to me and they want to talk to me about Manny Pacquiao. Right? It's kind of a weird, weird type dynamic. Right? I, I'm looking around the bar. I'm like, wow, do I, do I look like... You know, I'm a big-time Manny Pacquiao fan or something. Aren't there other guys in this bar who know more about Pacquiao than I do? And the argument that's made is that Pacquiao was on the verge of blowing out Marquez in that fourth fight. Right? That Marquez was expending a lot of energy in that fourth fight. That even though Pacquiao hit the canvas earlier, Pacquiao had Marquez over by the ropes when he lunges in, right? And Marquez looked spent. Let me make a few points, right? You know, I like to see just the opposite. And this is my own personal bias. You can figure out what your bias is. I like to see just the opposite. I don't want to see a guy relying on physicality in rematches or fourth fights of series. By then, I'm hoping the guy is so precise and surgical in his approach 
that he's not trying to outmuscle the other guy and turn it into some kind of physical contest. I actually prefer a surgeon who knows how to set up specific punches. Right? To me, dominance comes through when a guy can be dominant without overexerting himself. Right? The guy's normal game is dominant. In my opinion, Manny Pacquiao is working way too hard in that fourth fight against a fighter who he's been in three other matches with, who is older than him. Right? Pacquiao's the better athlete than Juan Manuel Marquez. Sure, he has the faster feet, he has the faster hands, he's more explosive. You know what? I see two guys working hard in that fourth fight. Not just Marquez. Let me point out something else, too. You know, if it's a bar fight and one guy is up against the wall, figuratively speaking, right, up against the ropes if he were in the ring, right, we would say, hey, the guy who's up against the wall in a bar fight, he's losing the fight. He's getting bum rushed. He's the one backing up. Boxing's not a bar fight. Right? Understand some of the greatest fights in the sports history involve guys who have their backs against the ropes by design. Right? Look at the Salvador Sanchez, Wilfredo Gomez bout, the first knockdown there. Right? Sanchez has his back up against the ropes. He's controlling the fight. Look at the rumble in the jungle. How many Floyd Mayweather fights do we have to see? where Floyd has his back up against the ropes or is close to the ropes, just allowing a Ricky Hatton to run in to get hit with a check left hook. Right? We've seen fights where guys literally go over to the ropes just to rest, just to catch a breather. Right? Marquez is over by the ropes, in my opinion, in the fourth fight by design. He's over there because he wants Manny Pacquiao running in to his right hand. I don't think Marquez being over at the ropes meant anything other than Marquez is setting traps. Right? Marquez is backing up throughout the third bout, the one in Dallas, isn't he? Right? He's backing up, having Manny come to him. You know, this is a way a lot of guys use to tire out their opponents. So let me close by just saying, you know, as you look at the Super Bowl and guys breaking down film, just ask yourself, what films can these guys look at of other opponents who had success against the guys they're fighting? Right? Floyd Mayweather literally can take out the entire Manny Pacquiao versus Juan Manuel Marquez four fight series. Right? He can look at the first fight. Manny dominates the first round. Then he sees the adjustments Marquez makes in the second round. Right? He'll notice Marquez is able to avoid Manny's left hand. Right? If Floyd wants to see guys who are able to land jabs on Manny Pacquiao repeatedly, repeatedly, he can take out the first Eric Morales fight. A fight history seems to have forgotten. He could take out that fight. He can also take out the Timothy Bradley first fight. Bradley throws caution to the win in the second fight. The first fight, Bradley's landing his jab. Right? Now, what can Manny take out? That's my question for you, YouTube Nation. Manny throws straight punches. He's not a hook-type guy like Miguel Cotto, right? Some of Floyd's opponents have had two-handed attacks, right? Floyd talks about how his toughest opponent was Emmanuel Augustus. Now, that's a great fight, folks. That's a great fight. I encourage you to go back and look at that Floyd Emmanuel Augustus film. But understand, Emmanuel Augustus, whatever his record, was a two-handed fighter. He's coming after Mayweather with two-handed attacks. 
right? Manny Pacquiao's right hand is good up close. I would say it's non-existent from distance. Unless he has that part of Emmanuel Augustus's game, he can't look at that film. By the way, Floyd wins that fight, by the way, but he can't look at that film and then say, you know what, I'm going to do what Emmanuel Augustus did. Right? And so, the point is, Floyd has more to work with in the research department than does Manny Pacquiao. That's just the reality of the situation, right? So I know there are many of you who believe Pacquiao wins this fight. I'll agree. Pacquiao's going to start fast, just like he did against Juan Manuel Marquez the first fight. I'll agree Pacquiao has the faster hand speed than Floyd Mayweather. No question about it. I'll agree Pacquiao still has punching power. We saw that in the Chris Algieri fight. But understand, Chris Algieri himself said that he expects Floyd to win the fight. Let me shake things up here a bit. If Chris Algieri were to fight Manny Pacquiao again, I think that fight would look different. Because I think with Pacquiao, there's an element of surprise the first time that gets to you. I believe it's in subsequent fights that you start to see patterns, right? Here, a, a student of a game like Floyd, you know, is going to be able to detect those, pat those patterns in the films, right? So, again, this is just a video that asks the question. Who has better film of the other fighter? I would say it's Floyd Mayweather. Let's buckle up and get ready for a great fight. If Manny Pacquiao doesn't do significant damage early, I think this fight will be over by the fourth round from a strategy standpoint. I think Floyd then dominates from that point forward. If Pacquiao comes out and hurts Floyd like Shane Mosley did, Right? And again, if you look at that Mosley film, Mosley hits Floyd with a long right hand, something Manny doesn't have. Right? But if right, Manny does what Mosley did, then Manny has a chance at an upset. Let's be blunt. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. Thanks for stopping by.